Welcome back to more adventures with the Florida Powerboat Club. Stu Jones here along with our producer, Ryan McCoy. And these adventures are all about the Summer Poker Run Tour 2023. We got back out on the road with the Cigarette Top Gun Flight 1130 powered by Mercury Racing 565s. And uh, we are continuing to campaign those amazing stern drive motors uh, complete with all of the good hardware. We got things uh, kicked off in Alabama with the Orange Beach Powerboat Week. And then off we went to a number of destinations throughout the country for the entire summer. But before we get started, let's thank our sponsors. Our presenting sponsor for the FPC 2023 series of events is Mercury Racing, celebrating 50 years of wide open. And by these sponsors in alphabetical order, Big Thunder Marine, Blackwater Boats, Cigarette Racing Team, Concept Boats, Deep Impact Custom Boats, Fountain Power Boats, Midnight Express Boats, Nortec High Performance Boats, Performance Boat Center, SD Marine Group, Isla Morada, and by Statement Marine. Happy birthday, Mercury Racing! Woo! And you gotta ask, uh, when did all those uh, boat people get dressed up and look so fancy? Well, we had a fancy affair with Mercury Racing's release of the new 500R in Charleston, South Carolina. There is Steve Miller himself giving us the formal welcome and talking about this new amazing motor. Uh, Stuart Halley standing right beside me and off screen Andrea Jansen. Uh, we can thank them for the invitation. Jackie and I joined a lot of the leading manufacturers in the performance marine industry, many of whom had brought their latest demo boats here equipped with Mercury Racing 500Rs. And of course, we're going to get a chance to ride those boats on the following day. But a b big thank you to Mercury Racing, uh, not only for giving us the red carpet treatment here at Charleston, but also continuing their great support of Florida Powerboat Club uh, and all of the events and activities that we provide to our thousands of loyal members who attend our events throughout the state of Florida. And we got a chance to ride on many of these demos. This is the new Fountain uh, 38 SCX powered by Quad Mercury Racing 500Rs. And we've got the Fountain uh, factory team up there at the helm giving us a ride. This boat had amazing acceleration from 60 miles per hour up to about 88 miles per hour in a matter of seconds. It literally threw me back in my seat. I was blown away by the performance of this machine. And of course, we're gonna see more of these 38 SCX models on a lot of our club events as we go forward because Fountain returns as a 2024 sponsor. Of course, uh, Midnight Express, uh, Nortec High Performance, MTI, Cigarette, and uh, the boat we're riding on Fountain, all of these big manufacturers with new boats here to ride on. And I didn't get a chance to ride all of them, but I did see Ron Zolak's brand new Cigarette 42 Aurorus. Uh, it has four Mercury Racing 500Rs, and that's a boat that's going to be back in Pompano Beach soon uh, and doing poker runs uh, with Florida Powerboat Club. But I was kind of blown away when I saw a 1,000 horsepower pontoon boat, and I got Bill Ferensky to take me out for a ride on this Avalon. Uh, he's a dealer for Avalon over in the Fort Myers area. Of course, we all know Bill from his activities with Fort Myers Offshore, and we've seen him on FPC runs in the past. But here she is rolling along at a nice, comfortable 60 miles an hour. Thanks to Bill and his crew for taking me on this uh, really cool, fast ride on a pontoon. We could have gone faster, but I was happy with 60. And here we are before we say goodbye. Uh, brand new Midnight Express 43 open, five Mercury Racing 500Rs. So thank you to the entire gang at Mercury Racing for bringing us out to Charleston and uh, later that day we got into Old Town and of course you don't go to Charleston without going for a horse and buggy ride and uh, we did that with the Old South Carriage Tours and we went from uh, a thousand horsepower to one horsepower uh, but this tour was absolutely spectacular remember now Charleston was founded in 1670 and it does remain as the largest city in South Carolina. Of course, it's not the capital, that is Columbia. And for those of you who are experts in historic trivia of American cities, the oldest city remains as St. Augustine, uh, founded in 1565. And I can honestly say that I can't get enough of this stuff. Whenever I go to some of these historic American cities, Jackie and I try to do as much as we can and as many tours as possible. And for those of us who were here and got a chance to do one of these horse and buggy tours, I think we can all agree, they're very, very informative and certainly very relaxing. Uh, but to go from 100 miles an hour to about three miles an hour, 
<laughs> in a matter of an hour was pretty incredible. Now, one of the other things that I found uh, that was really amazing about the tours is because, remember, there's more than one operator. There's probably three or four of these horse and buggy operators, but the city of Charleston controls all the tours, and they actually change the tours from day to day. So here we are uh, getting ready to go out uh, into the city, and the tour guide has to stop and check in with this uh, station attendant who's going to run his information, and then he's going to now provide him with a tour kit. So now he's getting the authority to go out and do this particular tour. There's no two tours that are the same. Uh, in fact, they all differ. So this tour guide needs to know exactly all of the different attractions along that particular route. But I will say that our guide had immense knowledge of all of the individual buildings and streets, and particularly the details about how you have to maintain the presence of your building to meet the historic guidelines uh, set by the city. And rolling along just a couple of hours later, Mercury Racing had a beautiful evening planned for us at an event center which had live music uh, and uh, wonderful local foods like Low Country Boil and barbecue. And before the evening was out, we were whisked off in an aircraft heading for Lake of the Ozarks for the annual cigarette rendezvous produced by Performance Boat Center. And officially our first stop on the summer tour with the cigarette was here at Performance Boat Center which we all know as uh, the headquarters for the Cigarette Rendezvous, uh, nine years running now. And that was a fact that Brett had reminded me of many, many times having owned this cigarette for about five years. Kept saying, Stu, you gotta come out to the Cigarette Rendezvous. Stu, I'm tired of asking you to come to the Cigarette Rendezvous. And finally, I told him earlier this year, I'm coming to the Cigarette Rendezvous. He says, no, you're not, no, you're not. You're just lying. So I had to bet him. <laughs> so I guess I won the bet. Um, and the bet was that he had to uh, bring me over to his place for lunch after the run, which he did, and that was fantastic. So uh, let's talk about the event, which is open to all owners of uh, anything branded cigarette racing team, uh, and that can be any boat, that can be any model, that can be any year, and now uh, at 55 years, of course, that takes in a lot of different models, and for those of us uh, who are hardcore cigarette uh, fanatics, well, yes, indeed, this is the place to be if you love cigarette because every model uh, imaginable and in boats that are in condition that might be considered showroom condition and yet they're uh, from the late 80s or the 90s, and that's the beauty of fresh water and short seasons. Like, for example, uh, this American Muscle 2, a boat that is very close to home and to my heart because. Back in 2007, when this boat was sold brand new uh, at the Miami Boat Show, it went to one of my club members, uh, Tony Mondazzi, Tony and Mona, who have been very active with the club over the years. I believe it was their fifth cigarette at the time. That was a pretty big deal to buy an American muscle boat from the Miami show. And I remember that the dealer gave me a Formex cigarette watch as a gift. Joining us today is Jeff and Brittany Miller, club members who own a fountain, so obviously they can't do the cigarette rendezvous, but they are local boaters. They know the lake inside and out, and they were so much fun to have on board, and a great help because uh, I really don't know my way around this lake too well. But we're getting off to a good start here uh, from just outside the marker at Performance Boat Center, heading off to our first stop. As we all know, there are many of these pool bars along Lake of the Ozarks, especially in the more congested area. This one is very famous, it's called Coconuts. And <laughs> just look at all those cigarettes, guys. <laughs> so this was mind boggling, to say the least, for somebody that loves cigarette. Uh, there's the Flight 1130 cigarette tied up uh, beside actually a couple of club members. Mike and Susan Pasco from Georgia were our neighbors here with uh, Coin Operated and there's Todd and Danielle Fountain from Michigan with their 41 Nighthawk Fire Escape. Uh, but the list just keeps going on and on. But enough about the boats. It's time to uh, get over by the pool and, and really enjoy what we really came for. And that's all these fun people. Uh, and this is what coconuts looks like on any given Saturday or Sunday, guys, in the summertime. And it is a fun place to hang out. Everywhere you look, there's a bar that's easy access. Everyone's having a great time. The floating docks are also amazing, as are the staff. So when you pull in here, there's a couple of girls in bikinis that literally run to you to grab your dock lines to help you get tied up. And that's going on as probably up to 200 boats can dock here at one time because they have so many docks. 
Uh, and we're not used to seeing anything like that, uh, not just in Florida, but probably anywhere in the country. I think this is one of the things that makes Lake of the Ozarks famous, and that is uh, that it is a fun, festive atmosphere all summer long. Uh, but moreover, that it's really built for people that love power boating. And that is exactly what Performance Boat Center realized many years ago when Mark Waddington got together with Brett Manier and they assembled a, a fantastic team, uh, not only to sell and service a power boats of all kinds, of course, they were cigarette dealers for quite some time. Uh, they're not presently, but they're also Sensation and MTI dealers. And of course, their new cat line, Performance Power Boats in a 36 and a 42 model, not to mention a handful of pontoons and other recreational boats that are popular uh, with the Lakers here in Lake of the Ozarks. Well, my crew is in the pool, but my happy place is out here on the docks enjoying the sights and the sounds of the cigarette rendezvous. And our next stop on this uh, cigarette rendezvous was Dog Days, another popular hotspot with a huge pool, a lot of people having fun. We stopped here and had lunch and checked off another box of our rendezvous tour map on Lake of the Ozarks. And I just want to uh, have a quick shout out uh, for the place we stayed, which was Margaritaville. There's the whole property there. But we had this cute little cabin on the water uh, right beside the Land Shark Bar and Grill. Uh, where we had dinner one night and of course the pool was uh, very busy with families and there's our balcony with Miss Jackie uh, just getting the day started and from our room there's our view from inside our room and of course we've got that course map uh, and it's all about getting back on the lake today so we stopped back at Performance Boat Center just in time because they were getting the whole gang fired up again to go out for day two and we've got some more waterfront uh, establishments to visit and a different part of the lake to check out I'm gonna let Miss Jackie do some of the driving today. Well, at least the slow stuff. Like, I let her go up to seven miles per hour. She's quite content with that. And big points for Miss Jackie wearing that life jacket before she gets out on the water. Well, our next stop today was uh, big on the hit list, and that is the cave where they have these really cool drinks. They put this plastic cup over a can. It's all pre-mixed, and uh, you got yourself a nice big frozen fruity drink as you're walking around the pool. I really love this place, the cave. Uh, I've never been there before. It's relatively new. I believe it's owned by Mark Waddington and some of his partners here. Of course, the crew from Performance Boat Center. And uh, there's our bunch of FPC members we love hanging out with. Ron Zolak and his first mate Kaylee, of course, Todd Fountain and Danielle, and a whole bunch of people that we see on a lot of poker runs. And uh, there's uh, Todd Fountain's new cigarette, beautiful paint and graphics, 41 Nighthawk, uh, Quad Mercury Racing, 450Rs, a team fire escape. And uh, can you say fireball? Oh, wait a minute, that's a Donzi, a ZR. Well, you, this is a cigarette rendezvous. You can't do the cigarette rendezvous. <laughs> well, actually, they weren't doing the cigarette rendezvous. Uh, Jackie wanted to have a nap, so I went out on the cigarette myself, and I decided to go all the way up to the Bagnell Dam, and I ran into this 38 Donzi, which happened to be owned by Fred Ross uh, from Team Big Thunder. 
And uh, Fred and Jeremy Anderson were out taking this uh, 38 Donzi for a shakedown run. Of course, I recognized the boat immediately because it belonged to Louis Sotero in Miami for quite a long time, and he had done uh, many poker runs with us in the club uh, in this 38. Uh, but they decided to buy it because I think that Mr. Ross has a passion for Donzies. Well, why not? He owns the company. Uh, and it just turns out that he's got uh, a very similar looking uh, Donzi Classic hanging in one of his showrooms here in Lake of the Ozark. So uh, they brought the 38 back in. I think they had maybe one engine overheated. So there's Mercury Racing 1075s. Uh, I parked the cigarette for a little while and uh, hung out to uh, check out their little cove here. And Jeremy Anderson, who's the general manager for Big Thunder, said, hey, Stu, come on, let, let me show you around. And that's exactly what they did. And what a cool operation they have indeed. Well, now it's, uh, I believe, day three. Most of the activities uh, have been finalized for the Cigarette Rendezvous, the ninth annual edition. We're so glad that we could make it. And, of course, uh, for 2024, it's going to be the 10th annual edition of this super cool event. I'm just glad that I got my Top Gun all the way there. I want to thank all the people that helped me. Uh, Kyle Hensley, he's the one who brought the boat all the way from Alabama. And then, of course, we left it with them for about a month to get some service done. And then Kyle picked it up uh, and took it further on all the way out to uh, Thousand Islands, which is going to be our next stop. But thanks to the gang at Performance Boat Center, a great shot here of their entire facility at Lake of the Ozarks. And this is going to be a nice casual day as we were invited by Mr. Brett himself, Brett Muneer, and his uh, first mate, Caitlin Crystal, invited us up to the house for a barbecue, which we did. I uh, met some of his family, and that was just a super enjoyable afternoon and a great way to cap off a very momentous uh, weekend with our friends at Performance Boat Center. And of course, uh, 120 cigarette owners and their crews who are all part of what turned out to be the world's largest cigarette rendezvous event. Uh, thanks to Jeff Helmkamp for this really cool picture that he got from the helicopter. And of course, thank you to all of the sponsors who supported this event. And now fast forward about three weeks uh, total and we have gone home and now returning via American Airlines. And remember this whole summer tour could not have been done without the support of my driver friends like Kyle Hensley who is uh, now taking the boat from Oklahoma City all the way to Clayton, New York. It's about 1,500 miles. And for those of you who fly around a lot, well, have you figured out where we are yet? Of course, it's the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia. Uh, and we are landing here uh, with American Airlines. And of course, we're just hubbing today. I'm with my wife, Jackie, and we're gonna uh, jump on another airplane that's gonna take us to Clayton, New York where we are gonna finally attend the Thousand Islands Poker Run, which has been running since 2016. It is a charity event. And I have been speaking with the organizers since as far back as 2016. In fact, we were registered to attend in 2020. And because of COVID, we were unable to attend. And then again, in 2021, uh, the COVID curse uh, made them cancel again. So it's been tough for us to get back there. Uh, and the only way we're gonna get this summer tour accomplished is by flying in and flying out of these various events. But here we are now, fast forward a couple of hours, uh, we have taken this American Eagle puddle jumper. We landed in Watertown, New York, which is about a half hour drive to Clayton. Now driving downtown along uh, Riverside Drive and looking at all the cool sites. There's a restaurant we're gonna visit a little later in the evening. And what a beautiful, quaint little town this is. And I'm so glad that we made it. And it really is a town that's being taken over by this charity poker run this weekend. Looking down the street, that is the big event tent where all of the parties and festivities are going to take place on Saturday after the poker run. And we'll eventually get to that. But in the meantime, it's Thursday and we have got to get our bearings in place. And we're going to arrive now at the Thousand Islands Harbor Hotel and got uh, Kai Hensley at the wheel. Now he picked us up at the airport. So I'm going to drop us off to get checked in while he goes and... Uh, finds a boat ramp to get this uh, cigarette in the water. And so far, by the looks of it, we're gonna have some fantastic weather for a very exciting weekend ahead. And you can't help notice uh, the Canadian and the US flag flying together. And that's because we're along a border town. Clayton, of course, looking across the St. Lawrence River to Canada. I don't believe that's actually Canada on the other side. There's a little delta of islands. The river's about five miles wide here. And uh, it, we're about maybe 18 to 20 miles away from Lake Ontario. but. Uh, nice to be almost home again for me because, of course, I grew up in Canada. Uh, so I've got feeling that I'm really close to home here, uh, but have never been to Clayton before. And just by driving around, I knew I was going to really enjoy this poker run. And in some ways, it kind of reminded me 
of the Boyne Thunder Poker Run up in Boyne City, Michigan. And I don't know what made me think that, but I just had a similar feeling. The town is very well maintained and the people are friendly. And there's the view, guys, looking out on the St. Lawrence River. That is, of course, a view that I'm very accustomed to as I was a kid because I grew up on the Welland Ship Canal. And all of these freighters that are going up and down the St. Lawrence are eventually going to enter Lake Ontario and then want to go to Lake Erie. Well, to do that, they've got to go through the Welland Ship Canal. And uh, that's what really made me feel close to home. Now, the first kickoff event for us was Thursday evening here with the street party. And now I think it's called Kenny's Toy Box. So, <laughs> of course, anybody close to the event knows that Kenny Lalonde is one of the event co-founders. And he's on the board of directors. Uh, but uh, these are his toys. <laughs> they all have blue, that's for sure. You just saw his Corvette, his Nortec 390 Sport. Uh, he's also got a DCB 37 wide body. Uh, somewhere around here and all these other little uh, toys that have matching blue paint so thanks to Ken and all of those who brought out toys to display for the street party great way to bring out all the town folks and uh, help out the local merchants and Friday morning uh, going to be a bigger day now because everyone's going to come out to uh, Thousand Islands Harbor Hotel to check out all the boats they're all in the water now most of the people attending are given a docking here on this nice floating dock marina you're going to see in just a minute here but uh, all around the grounds it's really historic and just a very cool place to visit and a lot to do here now we're down on the docks you can see just what an immense crowd we have going and what a great display of offshore performance boats all of the leading manufacturers here present and all floating dock marina and a lot of help uh, from the staff helping people come in and uh, dockside I uh, do want to mention a few of the other board members. You know, I mentioned Ken Lalonde earlier, but of course his wife Renee is the treasurer for the Thousand Islands Poker Run. And a, one gentleman that really helped us to get registered was Bobby Cantwell. Uh, he's a big part of this event every year. And uh, then Alex uh, Buddhison, she was the registration manager who helped us get signed up for the event. So a real strong team that helped us get registered. But walking around the docks here, I really felt at home because I ran into so many people who I've done poker runs with before, uh, you know, not always with FPC in Florida, but other poker runs around the country. And of course, a lot of the leading uh, manufacturers in the performance trade here at the event. Uh, of course, the Mercury Racing 500R was just launched, you know, weeks earlier in Charleston. Uh, and here we are, you know, three weeks later, four weeks later, a pair of uh, 500Rs on this DCB 37. And it was soon very apparent that we're still going to have this very cool mix of center consoles and performance cats and, and of course, those uh, old school V-bottoms, as we call them, boats like mine, my 38-foot cigarette, handful of outer limits, and a lot of really just very well-maintained machines. I remember, a lot of these guys that are living in this area are mostly doing freshwater boating in these summer months and then putting the boats away for the rest of the year. So. In many ways, it's kind of like what we saw at the Cigarette Rendezvous a couple of weeks earlier, where you're looking at boats that were just in absolute mint condition, even though they were a few years old, and uh, this is why. but we came here to go boating and that's exactly what we're going to do Friday afternoon while everybody's walking around the docks and checking out the boats. We're on the water and we're going to check out the local waterways starting with Bolt Castle. This is a scenic and very historic landmark uh, along the St. Lawrence River right across from Alexandria Bay which is going to be one of our stops on the poker run on Saturday. But if you come to this area this is one of the first things you're going to want to see and I think you can actually dock here at a public landing dock and then get off the boat and go tour around a little bit. And if I'm wrong about that, uh, it's something you used to be able to do. But now I think you can take these little uh, pontoon boats and tour boats 
over so you can uh, dock and land and uh, and do really the island tour, which I think if we had more time, I would have enjoyed doing that. It's been a long time since I've been on these waterways. We just wanted to really cruise. Uh, so we headed uh, eastbound up to St. Lawrence. Again, as I mentioned earlier, you're going to see a lot of these freighters. Uh, you'll see they're a little different looking than many of the ocean going vessels. These are all the Canada Steamship Lines, of course, is one of the big ones, but these are all lake freighters, so they have a different configuration, and they're built to go back and forth on the Great Lakes. Well, just a short ride on Friday, but now we're going to fast forward to Saturday morning because we really want to get you into the actual poker run, and we're going to have uh, some extra friends riding with us today, actually. Club members uh, Kurt Watkins and his wife Regina have flown in from Cape Cod uh, to join us for the run. And look at the docks this morning now. It's Saturday morning and the docks are just loaded with poker runners getting ready for the start. And here's our crew for the day, uh, Kyle Hensley on the left and uh, our friends Kurt and Regina. Uh, Going to be a fun day on the water. They actually own a Nortec 39, which they left back at home. And uh, they're going to ride with us. And in the meantime, we're going to see a lot of Nortex on this poker run today. So getting things started, uh, this was our first checkpoint. It was at Cape Vincent. And it was kind of a drive-by and uh, not really a stop where you could pick up a card. And about an hour later, we found ourselves tied up at Alexandria Bay where they had a variety of these uh, like floating docks and fingers where you could tie up. And it seems like everybody got here safely. There's a lot of uh, like algae and weeds in the water, but it doesn't really hurt your equipment as long as you're careful. Uh, but a great show on the dock here at Alexandria Bay. I remember coming here maybe like 20 years ago on, I think it was a Poker Runs America event. So it's been a long time uh, to move forward now 20 years later and see that it's this group from Clayton that are running the event. And Alexandria Bay used to host the event, but now they are just a lunch stopover if you don't want to do lunch at the big uh, open arena which was very crowded and there was a lineup to get in instead we found a little restaurant uh to have lunch and just purchased our own lunch and it worked out fine for us a lot of activity here in this little basin though and this guy with the sea ray did a wonderful job uh, as as did his uh, first mate up on the bow to avoid running into uh, kenny lalon's dcb there it is i told you he had one <laughs> the man about town uh, but yeah, can you imagine having all these beautiful power boats all tied up on this dock and then some big cruiser comes in and plows through them all. But that didn't happen. Uh, we had a great lunch stopover. You can see the boats rafted up four or five deep. I think we're all pretty accustomed to this on poker runs. So uh, nothing that went wrong with that. Everybody was ready and had their lines and fenders ready. So it really was a seamless and very smooth lunch stop in my opinion. Chisuli family and friends, how you doing? Hi, Elena. Oh, the sights and sounds of the Thousand Islands Poker Run. And there's that brand new MTI 390X. It originally came out with a set of Mercury Racing 400R V10s. Uh, celebrating Mercury Racing's 50th anniversary. And look at, she's got a brand new set of 500 Rs now. So way to go, Mercury Racing, uh, for bringing out two new Mercury outboard models in your the year of celebration, your 50th anniversary. And uh, John Kosker, Team Mystic, with uh, a set of four Mercury 600s. Got to love that. And uh, nice to see John Kosker and his crew all the way up here in Clayton, New York, uh, showcasing his uh, new Mystic 52. And we continued our boating to Ogdensburg on the St. Lawrence River, about another, uh, I believe it was 45 miles each way. So another 90 miles of running for the day before we're back on the trailer. And it was a fun day had by all. And uh, once again, thanks to my buddy, Kyle Hensley for bringing the cigarette all the way from Oklahoma City uh, for this Thousand Islands event. It was a fun weekend for all. We made a lot of new friends and we helped the organizers to raise some money by donating the cigarette Top Gun Flight 1130 as a uh, ride to Key West for a pair, and that's exactly what they did, raising about $5,000 as well as another couple of thousand dollars through some charity items. So glad we could be a part of it, guys. Thank you to the entire team at Thousand Islands Charity Poker Run for putting on a great event, and of course to the town of Clayton 
for rolling out the red carpet to what has turned out to be a fantastic summer getaway and something that you guys must put on your poker run bucket list because we had a blast. And for those of you who might want to take part in this event, you can go on their club website and the next dates for this year will be the July the 2018th to the 20th, 2024. So you better get on it because this event sells out every year. And for those of you who do make it to Clayton, give yourself enough time on Sunday or one of the days prior to visit the Antique Boat Museum in Clayton. It is the undisputed premier freshwater boating museum in North America with over 300 boats on display. It's located on the water, so some of the boats are displayed in water. There's over seven buildings and it's about a four and a half acre parcel of land, so plenty to do and see. They even have boat building workshops occasionally here. And uh, for those of you who want to have special events, they do rent the facility out uh, for very special events, uh, corporate and weddings and that sort of thing. So I think it's an incredible stop. You really got to get there, guys, because there are some historic boats on site here at this museum, and they are absolutely fantastic. And our next destination for the cigarette will be Maryland, where we're going to go to the Chesapeake Thunder in the City Poker Run. Uh, and we're leaving the truck and trailer at the airport in Clayton, and it's going to be taken by Palmetto Yacht Management. They're going to transport the entire rig with the truck and all so that Jackie and I could fly out of uh, Clayton with Kurt and Regina Watkins to Cape Cod for the next chapter in our summer tour. And as we taxied out uh, with perfect timing, we saw this commercial jet coming in and that uh, carried our driver, Daryl, from Palmetto Yacht Management, and he was going to be loading up the truck and trailer and heading out within minutes, and that just gave me peace of mind, knowing that my rig would be on the road in minutes, headed for the next poker run in Maryland. Well, guys, we are way past the half-hour mark of our summer tour for the uh, 2023 calendar year, and, guys, there's going to be two more shows coming up, so you can't afford to miss all the excitement. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you'll get an update every time a new episode is released. Be sure to check out the website at flpowerboat.com for all of the details about upcoming Poker Run events as well as membership information. You can follow us on Facebook at Florida Powerboat Club and you can follow us on Twitter and on these Instagram pages. Thanks to all of our viewers uh, for your wonderful comments on our page and you guys know who you are and I really do appreciate that. But if you have questions or comments you want to direct to me specifically, please use my personal email at stu at flpowerboat.com. I check that daily, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. We're going to sign off for now. This is Stu Jones along with our producer, Ryan McCoy, in the Pompano Beach studio. Have fun out there, guys. Be safe on the waterways. Wear your life jackets when the time is right, and always respect your fellow boaters. Bye for now.